Kenny with Value Center Gun Safety and I'm going to cover a video about the Ruger PC9 on how to disassemble it, clean it, and do a little bit of modifications to the trigger system to make the trigger a little bit better. The video is for Clayton M. Nagel, 43, who requested it. So hopefully this answers any questions you may have. Uh, if not, give me an email and I'll try to cover the rest of the questions you have that I didn't cover in the video. The only tools that you're going to need to take apart your Ruger PC9 is a broadhead flat tip screwdriver. Alright, the first thing you want to do is take off the barrel band. I've already loosened up the screws on this for speed of the video. Put the screws right there, just loosen it, and then slide it off. Okay, then we're going to take off the bottom screw. The screwdriver that mounts the barrel system to the receiver. So I already did that for speed of the video, so I'm going to take that off. So your part's all on one side. Okay, now is the top cover. A lot of people have a hard time, <laughs> don't know how to take this off. It just pops off. <clears throat> so grab it, give it a good, give your hand right there, and just pull it right off. That's it. Put that aside. And now you're ready to take off your system. Okay. Now you notice right here on the PC9 that it has these capture lugs. That's how Ruger has it mount to the receiver. Okay. I'll show you the tip on that later on. I don't recommend you disassembling your PC9 any further than this because trust me it's a pain in the ass to get back together. You can see how it works. Spring recoil system. Blow back operated. That's all there is to PC9. Super simple system. Very reliable, very, very robust. Okay? This right here, just in case you're asking, that's a block for the rear sight aperture. This came with ghost spring sights. And that's a block that you use for the other type of sights. Okay, I'm going to cover cleaning PC9 real quick. Obviously, then other than punching the bore with a bronze brass brush, scrubbing the bore, then punching it <clears throat> with a mop. I use mops now. I don't use all the... Uh, paper patches or anything like that, or fabric patches, because they're just a pain in the ass. These are easier to use, you can clean them off and wash them, and they last an incredibly long time, and you save a lot of money on these. They're like a dollar, two dollars at Midway USA or Brownells. Super cheap. All right, lubricant. I use motor oil. This is a mix, this is not um, triflow. I use motor oil, two parts motor oil, 1030, 1040, and one part automatic transmission fluid. Okay, the, the guns get very, very hot, carbon builds up very quickly, and the motor oil and ATF break down carbon on the weapons. I've never had a carbon issue with any of my weapons from 22s all the way up to my 308 caliber rifles because I use two parts motor oil, one part ATF. It doesn't ruin the bluing. I've never had any issues. You guys have all seen my weapons. They're beautiful and very well kept, and I abuse the shit out of them. All right, so that's just a hint. You don't have to, but it's a recommendation. All right, critical parts to clean after you fire your PC9, especially if you use reloaded ammo or Remington PMC ammo. That's really crappy, really dirty. Um, the Ruger builds up dirt and debris real fast. So an area you want to pay attention to is the spring assembly. Okay, inside there. And right here, the recoil track. You can see how good shape mine is. And this thing has thousands, probably maybe from 10,000 rounds, 20,000 rounds, so easy. And it's a great shape because of the oil mixture I use. And I take care of my weapons. All right, so you want to clean that with a wire, bro with a brush, toothbrush. You just put the oil on it and you just kind of flake out the dirt and debris. You can also use an air compressor to flick out or blow out any loose debris that's in there. And then, <clears throat> what I do is you want to collapse your spring 
and you want to put some oil on this guide rod, okay? Lube up your guide rod. Lube is love, is what I tell everybody. Just like a woman, your weapons need lube. Alright? Any part that you see metal on metal contact or more metal on metal slides, you want to put lube on it, okay? Also anywhere that's covered by a cover or the receiver. That way it doesn't rust after you touch it. So give lots of love. And other than that, it's basic maintenance and cleaning on a uh, PC9. Super simple. I'm not going to get into great detail on that. Okay, we're going to cover the trigger assembly now. This is a pain in the ass. I hate the Ruger PC9 trigger assembly. Ruger makes their triggers horrible on purpose to mitigate any legal liabilities that other gun companies have by making oversensitive triggers. Because idiots out there fire the weapon after they squeeze the trigger and they say the weapon fired by itself and they sue and I'm not going to get into that. Those are the fucking idiots that ruin our gun industry, the lawyers and the idiots that can't control their weapons. So Ruger makes this incredibly long trigger pull <clears throat> excuse me, to mitigate any legal liabilities. Alright, the first thing I'm going to cover is the receiver. There are normally two pins right here and right there. I removed, the, there's a fulcrum system in there. I removed already, right? you can't see it because I took it out. That's part of the ridiculously long safety system Ruger has. I took it out because I've never had a negligent discharge in all my life. I know that this is my safety and the weapon will not fire unless I pull the trigger. It's a mechanical object, right? It's like saying your car is going to start by itself just because you put the key in the ignition. Not going to happen, right? All negligent discharges are operator error. I don't care what you say unless you tinkered with the sear and disconnector so much that it's like a hair trigger. But then again, that's your friggin' fault. All right, so I remove that fulcrum system. Just knock, you just knock the drift pins out and remove it. Okay? Now, legal liabilities. Yeah, I shouldn't be showing you how to do this, but you're taking any responsibility by tinkering with your own weapon. Okay? Here it is the Ruger receiver and the rest of the trigger assembly, the hammer assembly. Okay? Incredibly crude. Right? Tons of safety features in this thing, like beyond ridiculous safety features. There's like four safety features in here that you're required just to get the hammer to move back. Okay. So another way to get your trigger to lighten up is after you move that, remove that fulcrum that's inside the receiver, upper receiver, <clears throat> you see this part right here that moves? See how it goes up like that? What you can do is, I'm not going to tell you how, this is all mitigating the legal liabilities, but there's a way you can get this to move forward. See that? Okay. Now you can see, after I move forward on the trigger assembly, see how the trigger assembly comes back? Okay. There's a way to do that, so it takes out that ridiculously long trigger pull that Ruger has, and it basically makes it like that. So every time you fire the weapon, it's got a fast, fast follow-up. You don't have to do this crazy long pull. You'll just go bang, 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 like that. The sear and hammer on this thing are a pain in the ass to take apart and put back together. I do not recommend taking the sear and hammer apart unless you are an advanced armor. Trust me when I say it, do not dick with that. Unless you're brave and you want to just tinker with your gun, but anyways. So that's it. I'm not going to show you how to do that. You can figure it out yourself. If you're mechanically inclined, you can look at it and see how it operates. But there's a way to reduce that incredibly long trigger pull that Ruger has. It starts out here and it goes down. I've already shaved mine down a bit and I did some other stuff to it to make it nice and fast. Okay? Alright, now the trick to putting this thing back together, <clears throat> that's another kind of a pain in the butt. The hammer has to be back, okay? In order to put the hammer back, <clears throat> see this little part right there? Okay, that needs to be moved forward in the forward position. Push it that way. So move it forward with your finger, and the hammer will come back. Okay? <clears throat> There's some grooves 
that are right there in your piece of nine and those fit the grooves with your claw hooks so it goes like that hooks in now here's the tricky part okay as you you get it down to here you have to pull the, hand, the, the bolt back about halfway sorry if you do it before you put the, the upper receiver on the lower receiver so pull it back halfway and then drop it in then if, if you don't do that you just put it in like that bolt locks okay on fire so you'll put your gun back together you'll be like what the fuck sorry for my language but we're all guys all right so like that halfway back down okay just by removing that fulcrum system that's in there you can see how already how much my trigger systems and bolt improved now I did the sear and hammer on it a little bit but I'm not gonna show you how to do that but you can see it to me I like that with the fulcrum that part that goes up like I showed you by altering that I'm not gonna tell you how this actually comes forward like I showed you earlier and so you get this real fast, nice trigger. Real, real fast shooting rifle. Okay? All right. Now, right, so if it goes back together like normal, put your cover on, close it down, and reassemble your rifle. Not forgetting to lubricate all the parts that you touched with your hands on bare metal. This is Kenny with Value Center Gun Safety, and that's another Ruger PC9 trick tip.